And uh, when you have a situation like we do today, which, which came out of the Greco-Roman culture, where you have one man every week ad infinitum preaching a 45 to 50 minute or however long it is sermon to the same group of people every single week and they call that church, you're doing a couple things there that you may not have ever thought about. One, you are hindering the ever member functioning of the body of Christ. Now, I, I'm going to contrast this with meetings that I've been in, which I would call organic church meetings, where we would have a congregation and every single person drew in that room would stand up and share. And I'm not talking about 45-minute sermons. I'm talking about share out of a living, breathing experience of their walk with the Lord. And some of those sharings could go two minutes, three minutes, ten minutes, five minutes, some 20 minutes. And now what's happening is I am hearing something about Jesus Christ from the different members of his body, and I am being edified not by one person, but by many. It's a lot easier to put on a performance and have everyone spectate than to really let the body of Christ do what she does best, and that is have everyone function. Now, we're not again, we're not talking about everybody in a room giving a sermon because that meeting would go on for a week without stop. What we're talking about is everyone in that group has been, and here's the missing note in a lot of this, has been trained and equipped to function. I'm borrowing that word from Paul. He talks about the functioning of the members of the body. Now, how many times have you heard a sermon? How many times have your listeners heard a sermon from a preacher saying, I'm preaching these messages to equip you, to equip the body of Christ? And my question then is, well, why don't you do what Paul of Tarsus did, leave that congregation on its own without any human hierarchical structure, (laughs) and see if those people can care for one another, love one another, have meetings where they share the Lord with each other, and they are nobody's dominating over the others. That, to me, is the acid test of whether or not you've equipped a group of people to do that. And that's what myself and some others who are involved in this work We go around the country, we go to other countries, we plant these types of organic churches, and our main job is to equip the saints. And that means we're leaving, they're not going to see us for a long time, and we're not going to install a clergy, we're not going to erect hierarchical structures, we're going to leave them to the Holy Spirit. And uh, somewhere around the second century, Drew, those men who did this kind of thing, this kind of equipping work, where they would plant a church and then leave it to the headship of Christ, they died. They all were murdered horribly, except for John, we're told, John the Apostle. And what happened is there there was an awful big gap, and many of the pagan philosophers were getting saved, becoming Christians, and because they were articulate and because they were leaders in their own world, they stepped into leadership in the church, and you had grow up a hierarchical structure hmm that borrowed much from the Roman basilica civic services and the philosophical mindset and the sophists and so forth, and you have modern-day Christianity.